When you first arrive to the Big Island of Hawaii, there are so many things you want to do all at one time. On the average, people visit the Big Island of Hawaii from anywhere from three days to seven days at a time. One of the most popular destinations on the Big Island is the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. So where is the Big Island of Hawaii? The Big Island of Hawaii is located on the southeastern part of the Hawaiian island chain. It is the largest island of the eight main islands that you see here on this map. All of the Hawaiian islands were formed by volcanic activity, with the youngest island being the Big Island of Hawaii. The farther northwest you go, the older the island. Now Hawaii drifts to the northwest at about three inches per year. Due to the movement of the Pacific Plate over the hot spot, which fuels the current volcanic activity of Hawaii. The Big Island of Hawaii is very huge. It covers 4,028 square miles or about 10,430 square kilometers. The dimensions of the Big Island is 95 miles north to south and 80 miles east to west. The total distance of the coastline of the Big Island is 266 miles. Now that you have an idea how big the Big Island is, Let's take a look at the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Now the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park covers this entire area here in green. It is 323,431 acres or 1,308 square kilometers. However, the majority of visitors only visit this part right here, which is about 10% of the National Park, which includes the Caldera and the Cheney Craters Road. Now, if you fly into Kona International Airport, the distance between the airport and Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is about 96 miles. If you have flown into Hilo, which is a bit closer, the distance between Hilo and the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is around 30 miles. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park contains two active volcanoes, Mauna Loa and Kilauea. Welcome to the virtual tour if you only have one day to visit Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. I will show you the best places in the park as well as the best times to visit those places. And you will also see some eruption activity. First, the visitor center, the art gallery, and the volcano house. Allow about 45 minutes to an hour. Best time to visit the visitor center, the volcano art gallery, and the volcano house is in the morning when it opens up, around nine o'clock. There's not that many people there. However, as time goes on, especially in the afternoon, there's gonna be a crowd and you may have a hard time finding parking. There are rangers on duty who will give you a volcano update as well as explain how the volcanoes have formed. The store inside the visitor center has a variety of items for sale, such as books, clothing, and magnets, and more. Now, right next to the visitor center is the Volcano Art Gallery and it is open from nine to five. Here in the Volcano Art Gallery, you will find a variety of different types of art from local artists, ranging from paintings, photographs, pottery, and jewelry, and much, much more. So the Volcano Art Gallery is definitely worth checking out. There are all kinds of cool things in here. Like I said, photographs of the volcano, pottery, different types of jewelry, and of course, friendly staff. And now, on to the Volcano House. The Volcano House is a hotel that is perched on the rim of Kilauea Caldera, which is an active volcano and currently erupting as of the 3rd of November, 2021. The Volcano House has 33 rooms, 10 cabins, and also 16 campsites located within the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. It also has gift shops, a bar, a lounging area, and also a restaurant. And last but not least, let's not forget the spectacular view of the Kilauea Caldera. That mountain in the background is Mauna Loa. Kilauea Caldera is two and a half by two miles long, 279 feet deep, 
It's 100,000 years old, making it the youngest volcano in the Hawaiian Islands. The elevation is 4,091 feet above sea level. And it was formed by many collapses of its magma chamber. Now continue west on Crater Rim Drive to the steam vents and sulfur banks. The time you will need here is anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. The best time to visit is in the morning between 9 and 11.30 and between 3 and 5 p.m. in the afternoon. The steam vents are basically formed from deep cracks on the edge of Kilauea caldera, where the rainwater seeps all the way down into the crack and reaches hot rock heated by magma, and then it comes back up to the surface in the form of steam. The steam is mostly noticeable on either cold days or on days after heavy rainfall. Also on very clear days, you'll get an excellent view of the Kilauea caldera and Halemaumau crater. And at nighttime, when there's an eruption, you'll be able to see the glow of the lava. Also in the park, you will find these plants that are called sensitive plants when you touch them. They're actually native to South and Central America, but are considered an invasive species for Hawaii. And when you touch the plants, they will actually fold and droop. It's a defensive uh, mechanism within the plant to protect the leaves. I'm going to be taking temperature readings from these two steam vents. I'm going to approach the first one right here and put the thermometer in there. Now I'm getting temperature readings probably around 100 degrees, maybe 103 or so. I'm going to move on to the second vent. I'm going to bring out my thermometer. This one's a little bit hotter than the first vent. Okay, I'm getting 109, 112, 148 degrees. Um, I believe the highest reading I've gotten in here is about 158 degrees, 152, okay? And like I said, it, it varies depending on how, how deep you go here. Now go back to the parking lot and head towards the east about 100 meters and you'll see a trail off the north side of the road called Sulphur Banks Trail. And this will take you to the area called the Sulphur Banks. You'll also see some more steam vents as well. Along the way, you'll see these trees that have red flowers on them called Ohia Lehua, which is native to Hawaii. As you go down the trail, if you look on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you'll see a giant crack with more steam coming out. Do not venture off the trails. Always stay on the trail. Here is a close-up of the flowers of the Ohia Lehua tree. Now continue farther down the trail, just about a few hundred feet, and you'll start to see the sulfur banks. There are three types of gases emitted here at the sulfur banks. Carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. If you are pregnant, or if you have heart and respiratory conditions, it is advisable not to hike in the sulfur banks area. Once you are there, you can actually see the deposits of sulfur on the side of the hill over there. After the sulfur banks, go back to the parking lot at the steam vents and start heading west towards a place called Kilauea Military Camp. You'll see it on the right hand side. And this is mainly for active duty military, retired military, DOD civilians, as well as foreign friendly military. It is a very nice and quiet place for military folks and their families to relax. You can see Mauna Loa over there in the background. There are a variety of cabins here. There are one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom cabins. There is also a dorm-like sleeping quarters. Um, you got a bar, you got a 
store, you got a cafeteria, and even a bowling alley. Here's what one of the rooms look like. You got a fireplace, you got a living room, a TV, you have a refrigerator and a microwave, a couch, a desk. Um, here's the bedroom. Very nice bedroom, has a closet, has a TV also. And over here, you can see the living room. And here's the bathroom, which also has a hot tub. Here's what the recreation area looks like. It not only has pool tables and games, but also has a bowling alley and a snack bar. Now, if you're here at nighttime, you'll be able to see the glow from the lava lake inside Kilauea's Halemaumau Crater during an eruption. The lava lake in this video is less than two miles away, and Kilauea Military Camp is located on the edge of Kilauea Caldera. Yes, Kilauea Military Camp has a little bit of nightlife because you can see a bar, and there's the, uh, the cafeteria. And there you go, in the background, you can enjoy the glow from the lava lake. And right over here, you can see the cabins and the general store, which is open till about seven o'clock at night. Now let's continue on about another mile down the road on the left-hand side, which is the Kilauea Overlook. Allow anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to enjoy the view. Now I took this photo of Hale Mamo at nighttime from the Kilauea Overlook. Now the best time to visit during the day is between seven o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Now if you wanna see the lava glow, the best time to go is after nine o'clock at night, or if you wanna be there really early before five o'clock in the morning. Now we continue on down to the end of the road where the Jagger Museum is located. And it's been closed since 2018 due to the earthquake damage. Now it is illegal to go beyond this point right here. Um, this area has been closed actually since 2008 when the lava lake first appeared in Haleimama in March of 2008. You can actually see that trees are starting to overtake the road as time goes on. Now the Jagger Museum and the Overlook is closed. However, they do have restrooms here that you can actually use, along with eruption activity viewing. The reason why the Jagger Museum is closed is because the building and the area surrounding it is unstable. It could be possible that some parts of the overlook over here could fall into the caldera. Now, if you want to get a really good view of the crater, there's actually a better view than the overlook here. You're going to have to go down the trail a little bit. That's just on the right, and it'll take you there to see this view of the caldera and Hale Mama Crater. And if the lava lake rises high enough, you may be able to see the lava lake. And it is only a three minute walk from the Jagger Museum parking lot. Just like the Kilauea Overlook from before, the best time to visit during the day is between seven o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Or if you wanna see the lava glow at nighttime, best time to go is after nine o'clock or before five o'clock in the morning. So after you're done here, you're gonna go back towards the entrance of the park and just before you exit, turn right, which is going south just before you, you exit the park on Crater Rim Drive. You're gonna continue on this road for about a couple miles. You're gonna be driving through some rainforest. And your first stop is going to be the Kilauea Iki Overlook. This eruption happened in 1959, just like you see right here. And the eruption lasted about a month and it also the lava has covered the entire crater floor. Now there is a trail that goes inside the crater called the Kilauea Iki Trail. It's about 1.7 miles long or about 3.4 miles round trip. Up next is a popular destination called the Thurston Lava Tube. You wanna allow about an hour here. The best time to go is between seven in the morning and 11 in the morning. The reason why, because the afternoons here are very crowded with limited or no parking. Keep this in mind. Now here's the entrance to the Thurston Lava Tube. 
you're gonna go down this path right here can be a little bit steep at times so be careful especially when it's raining the distance to the lava tube is less than two tenths of a mile so it's a very very short distance if you'll notice off the path it is a very very thick rainforest so here we are at the entrance of the Thurston lava tube a little bridge that goes over this uh, crevice here and the lava tube is about 600 feet long or about 180 meters and it's about 20 feet high in some places the Hawaiian name for Thurston lava tube is Nahuku and this lava tube was actually formed about 500 years ago so imagine this about 500 years ago a very very hot molten river of lava flowed through this place the lava tube is lit from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night time so if you come before 8 o'clock in the morning or after 8 o'clock at night time, you will need to bring a flashlight. Be prepared to get a little wet because there is water that drips from the ceiling at times. All right, so we made it to the end. And from this point, it's about another fifth of a mile to the end of the trail. Now, just down the road, just a short distance, is the view of Pu'u Pu'ai, which means Gushing Hill in Hawaii. It's the site of the event from the Kilauea Iki eruption of 1959. This is actually a little bit closer than the other vantage point of the Kilauea Iki Lookout. There are less trees here blocking the view so you can actually see more of the crater floor of Kilauea Iki. That line in the middle of the crater floor is the Kilauea Iki Trail. Now the next part to visit is the Devastation Trail. This is destruction caused by the eruption of Kilauea Iki in 1959 and this is where the Crater Rim Drive ends. The trail is about a half mile long and you'll need about anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to visit. The best time to visit is between 9 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. Here is a devastation trail right here. You can see the remains of some trees that were killed in the 1959 eruption. You can see pumice laying all over the ground and that little mound in the background is Pu'u Pu'ai, the once active event of the 1959 Kilauea Iki eruption. Now, when you're done with the Devastation Trail, keep your car parked in the parking lot at the Devastation Trail. And then, what you're going to do is you're going to walk towards the entrance, and then you're going to go right to see the eruption. Throughout the park, you will notice these birds. These are called Nene, or the Hawaiian Goose. And they're native to Hawaii, and about less than 3,000 are in existence. They are an endangered species, and it is illegal to touch them and feed them. Do not feed the Nene. Now these Nene right here are eating someone's leftover crackers. Please pick up your food if you drop it on the ground. One of the dangers these birds face is being run over by cars. Now let's continue on. You're going to go straight down this road. You're going to go out to the parking lot and hang a right. You can't miss it. And you're going to go straight down this road for about 1.25 miles. Not this one, but this one right here. Allow about two hours for this entire hike. Okay, like I said, it's 1.2 miles down and 1.2 miles back. So it's about a total of about two and a half miles. 
it is well worth the hike to go see the eruption. And the one thing you're going to notice is that the landscape is going to change from rainforest to desert all within a mile. Now about halfway down, you will notice a large crack in the middle of the road. This was formed during the 2018 Caldera Summit Collapse. Now we're getting a little bit closer to look at the lava lake. Okay, it's just right down the road here. As you get a little bit closer, you'll see a trail that goes off to the right-hand side, marked by orange cones. And here is the entrance. It's about 300 meters from here to the viewing area to see the eruption. And as we walk along the trail, you can see this spectacular view of the Kilauea Caldera and Hale Mau Mau Crater. Once you get to the viewing area, you'll be able to see the lava lake very clearly. There it is right there. You can see lava coming out of the cone. You can see Mauna Loa in the background, especially if it's a clear day. You can see the entire collapse features that happened in 2018. And the road ends just right over there because part of the road has collapsed into the caldera. Now, if you have a zoom camera, like a Nikon P1000, you can actually zoom in to the vents that are erupting inside the crater. And this vent is located on the western wall of Halimamal Crater, and it's the only active vent as of this moment. Now, this is a little bit closer, and you can see the orange lava spewing out of the vent and going into the lava lake. The fountains are about anywhere from 50 to 75 feet tall. Now, if you have time or a few extra minutes, when you leave the coned trail, the marked trail, and go back out to the road, you can actually go down to the right for about a few hundred feet and actually get some more views of the crater as well as some of the uh, spatter ramparts like you see right here, the fissures from the 1974 eruption. Here's a close-up of the fissure. That's vegetation growing in it. Now this fissure was active back in 1974. You can see where the once molten spatter piled on the outside of the fissure. Now right across the street from this view right here, you'll be able to see Kenakakoi crater and the lava here filled up part of the crater back in 1974. Now when you're done here, head back up to the parking lot and you're gonna go down Chain of Craters Road. The best time to visit is anytime because there's very little traffic. You're gonna to to allow three to five hours to visit and the road is 19 miles long. Now the first place we're gonna visit is the 1974 lava flow. And if you look right here in the inset, this is what the lava looked like as it covered the Chain of Craters Road in July 1974. The eruption lasts for about four days, from July 19th to July 22nd. Up next is the Lua Manu Crater, which means bird pit in Hawaiian. Lava from the 1974 eruption filled this crater with 50 feet of lava. Also, signs are constantly reminding visitors do not feed the Nene Goose. Okay, so up next 
And on the left-hand side is the Puhimau Crater, which means forever smoking. On certain days on the other side, you will be able to see steam coming out of the top of the crater. Hence the name Forever Smoking or Puhima. Up next is the May 1973 lava flow. And across the road is a Hi'iaka crater, which means carried egg in Hawaii. Unfortunately, there's no way to get close to the crater's edge. And not too far down the road is Pau'ahi Crater, which means destroyed by a fire in Hawaiian. Pau'ahi Crater had three eruptions in recent history, May and November 1973 and November of 1979. Now these spatter ramparts and fissure was from the 1979 eruption. Now this fissure right here is at least 500 meters long and it also crosses to the west of Chain of Craters Road. Next up is Mauna Ulu, which means growing mountain in Hawaiian. This eruption started on the 24th of May, 1969 and lasted for a little bit over five years and ended on the 22nd of July, 1974. Now this short hike will take you to the eruption site of the 1969 fissures. And you can see Mauna Uru in the background there. And here's the eruption fissures right here. Now let's get a little bit closer and check out the spatter ramparts of this 1969 fissure in Mauna Uru. Get a little bit closer. Now the inset right there shows you what the fissure looks like from the air. Here I am standing on top of the fissure and you can see the spatter ramparts piled all around the fissure. Now let's approach this fissure right here and look down inside it. You can see there's trees growing and lots of vegetation. Now let's head back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head to Mauna Ulu. Okay, the road you see right here is the remnants of the Chain of Craters Road. It got covered back in the 1970s from the Mauna Ulu eruption. Now this trail goes to Pu'uhulu Hulu, which is that cone in the background there, and Mauna Ulu, which is to the right. It is a 2.5 mile round trip to Pu'uhulu Hulu and Mauna Ulu, so you need to allow yourself at least anywhere from an hour to about two hours, depending on how fast you walk. That's Pu'uhulu Hulu right there. And to the right, that shield in the background is Mauna Ulu right there. And the inset shows what the eruption looked like back in the early 1970s. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna to go to another place called Mau Loa o Mauna Ulu, which means forever growing mountain. Basically what this area is, it shows all the lava flows that were active between 1969 and 1974 from the Mauna Ulu eruption. You can see Mauna Ulu in the background right there. Nothing but a huge lava field. At around mile marker eight or nine, you're gonna start seeing less trees. And also you're gonna start seeing the ocean. And 
as we go farther down here, the next stop is going to be the Keala Como Lookout, which means entrance path. Now here, you get excellent views of the ocean and the coastal plain. And the elevation here is about 2,000 feet or about 609 meters above sea level. Now let's continue our drive down the chain of craters road and enjoy the view of the ocean. Here is another uh, pull off where you can actually get another view of the coastal plain and the ocean. As we go a little bit farther east on the Chain of Craters Road and continue our path down towards the sea, we will leave the barren lava fields and you'll start seeing more trees for a short period of time. Then we're going to turn around a hairpin turn and continue down towards the sea, going towards the west now. The next destination on the Chain of Craters Road is the Pu'ula Petroglyphs. Pu'ula in Hawaiian means long hill. The hike is about a mile and a half round trip to see the petroglyphs. So you're gonna to have to allow yourself at least an hour to an hour and a half depending on how fast you hike. It is less than three quarters of a mile to the petroglyphs and the petroglyphs date from 1300 to 1450 AD. And the best way to look at them is from an angle when the sun's high in the sky. There are over 23,000 petroglyphs that dot the entire area. The majority of them be in circles and dots. At the Petroglyph location, there is a boardwalk that goes around in a circle. Please stay on the boardwalk and do not get off of it. Now these petroglyphs date anywhere from 1960 to 2021 AD. It's a shame that uh, visitors had to ruin this part of the landscape. Up next, the end of Chain of Craters Road. Now this is the lava field from the Pu'u'o eruption, which was active between 1983 and 2018. The lava field is eight miles wide with Kalapana on the other side. If lava starts flowing into the ocean again, this is the area where you're gonna start your hike to go see the lava flowing into the ocean. However, lava has not been seen on the flow field nor flowing into the ocean since spring of 2018. The last time lava was seen on the western part of the flow field was spring of 2003. In 2002 and 2003, lava has covered several segments of the Chain of Craters Road. Here is Pu'u'o from 1999, and this is a skylight, which is an opening into a lava tube. These are just some of the features you can see whenever there's active lava on the flow field. Now these are lava bubble bursts that I captured back in 1999 when the lava interacts with the seawater.
Now let's head back up to the Devastation Trail parking lot and view the eruption at nighttime. The best time to go when there's less people is after 10 o'clock at night or before five o'clock in the morning. Now, if you're lucky, you may be able to see it around sunset. Hopefully you get a parking spot This concludes the virtual tour of If You Only Have One Day to Visit Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. In the future, I'm going to do another video, and this is about going off the beaten path in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, such as visiting places such as Mauna Loa, which is the largest volcano on Earth. Exploring the Southwest Rift Zone and the Mauna Iki eruption site. We'll take a hike also to Nepal Crater, as well as explore the lava fields of Mauna Ulu and Pu'u'u'u. Thank you for watching.